Transport, electrify city freight, cargo trams. In Dresden, Volkswagen moves their engines to their, um, uh, to their production line with a cargo tram. And in Amsterdam, there's a, a plan to have 2,500 trucks replaced by 59 cargo trams, eliminating 16% of local air pollution in Am Amsterdam. We need to electrify our long-haul freight. We need to, we need to change our, uh, our transport infrastructure to at least 80% rail. We need to reduce consumption of oil. We need to save millions of barrels of oil. So I'd argue that we initially start with a target of an 80% modal shift from private car trips to tram train. We need to redirect billions of dollars in road budgets and oil imports. In 2015, we're looking at importing $13 billion of oil into Victoria just to power our economy. $7 billion in car purchases. So if we change our, our remaining, uh, remaining usage, we change our fleet into plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, then those solar thermal fa farms and the wind power turbines can actually provide us with power for those. A quick uh, look at energy efficiency. This Nissan Patrol does 17 litres per 100 kilometres. And this Siemens Combino tram does 16 litres per 100 kilometres equivalent, but carries 190 people. So next time you see one of those delaying a tram, um, you'll see how perverse that situation is. This plug-in hybrid electric car, which is commercially available from General Motors and, and Toyota in 2010, would use three barrels of oil and a solar system that size on someone's roof, 10 panels, to drive the same sort of average number of kilometres that, uh, that average cars drive in, in Australia. So on the left, we can see a Falcon or Commodore requires 12 barrels of oil per annum. If it lasts 18 years, you can imagine um, 120 barrels of oil in your lounge room. It's a pretty unpleasant thing. That's, that's the amount of barrels of oil equivalent from those. It's right at the end. So urban villages, pearls on a string. We, we need to look at uh, creating high density around our train line stations and in between uh, we can have tramways and build and build our uh, build our urban villages, and then people from those areas can actually take a, a tram to two ra two separate railways, so between stations. There's sort of a look at it from overhead. You've got your railways at the end, and the urban village in the centre. There's an up close of how that could look. So this is about urban design, which is the other thing we require: running the running the trams through the centre of the urban village. Zero carbon houses. Policy in Wales by 2012, that means no imported energy to heat and cool them. Zero carbon buildings. CH2 in Melbourne is a good first attempt and effectively that's policy in the UK for 2019. So no energy brought on site. And back to India and China. Industrial process steam. Here the Oroville Solar Bowl in, in Tamil Nadu, India, just through simply moving that little focal point around, so very innovative, well ahead of Australia, that's how they cook their food for their guests and provide food for schools. 650 degree steam. And finally, in Sweden, the hottest place on earth, photovoltaic and thermal combined, combined heat and power. So they're, they're building troughs and direct solar panels that will produce heat, which can drive cooling in, in, in summer. So heat can drive absorb, absorption chillers but could also drive heating in, in summer as well as electricity. So getting more out of the same rooftop space, more energy converted for our usage. And uh, a plug for my uh, employer, if you want to look at offsets, one that looks at modelling real-time carbon emissions and drawing down carbon, then climatepositive.org's the go. And finally, to finish up, if you want to know more about solutions, we have a solutions-focused radio show. So tune in bi-weekly, Science and Solutions, Fridays at 8.30am, and a community show Mondays at 4pm where you can ring in to talk back and ask questions. Thank you.